All right, hey folks, welcome back to the Shallow Hunter channel. All right, what we're trying to figure out today is can I pull this stock Predator 420 out of the box, throw it into a jet john, and have it rip? I think it's a question worth answering because if you're not familiar with these engines, they are easy to work on, but if you're saying, hey, I don't want any added cost or I don't feel comfortable opening up and modifying it, this will show you what you can get away with with a totally stock build. In this specific video, I'll be explaining the reasoning behind why I prefer the Predator 420, some history with past engines, and what model to look for. It does matter whether you go with a Hemi versus a non-Hemi, and I'll show some details on that later in this video. This will be part one of a series where I explain what engine I prefer to install, how to install on the boat. We'll also be doing some water testing with the bone stock engine. If you find this informative or any bit entertaining, please like, comment, subscribe below with any questions you have. If you'd like to build your own Predator Jet John, please check out shallowrunner.com. I have some parts there, and I have a ton of other parts in development that I'll be explaining in some later videos. So this bone stock Predator 420 that I'll be installing into my old boat is sitting on top of a relatively untouched John boat here that I was considering doing a build series start to finish if that's something you guys found uh, helpful. So in my last video, I threw a bone stock Predator 212 in my old boat, and then I did some modifications to see how well it could perform. So honestly, that boat did great, especially after putting a carb, a pipe, things like that, and I thought it held up pretty well. I'll show you some footage of that boat in action, as well as the Predator 420 that was modified. Uh, you can see the kind of range of options and speeds that they were going at. So why go with the Predator 420? Simply, it's just a more powerful engine. The more torque and power you're able to put out, the faster you can spin your pump, and the faster you spin your pump, the faster you can go in the water. So if you're curious about how to hook up one of these engines to a Wave Runner pump, you can check out the 212 build video. So the connection is pretty simple. Uh, it's right here. So you have your mid shaft that connects to your jet pump, and this is a custom adapter I developed so that you could just do a relatively easy install. Essentially. It's a Lovejoy connection. You take the coupler, made simply like that, and it's direct drive. So why does the Hemi versus the non-Hemi matter? Well, it's based on cost, and I can show you the heads side by side and explain kind of what you're getting into, whether you're going with a Hemi versus a non-Hemi. What you're looking at is a side-by-side -side comparison of the Predator 420cc Hemi version and the Predator 420cc non-Hemi version. Now, this non-Hemi version is simply a clone of the GX390. If you're going with this 420 route, I'd highly recommend the Hemi version over the non-Hemi version. And there's a significant financial reason, which is easy to see upon further inspection. Now, this only applies if you're going to be upgrading these motors later down the road. So if you're not upgrading this non-Hemi version, you don't have to worry about this. But I have a feeling a lot of folks will be taking out the governor and doing some modifications. If that's the path you're headed on, this is why this matters. One of the two main differences between these is that the Hemi has this robust rocker arm style, while the non-Hemi has a traditional rocker arm. Now, if you're upgrading these engines, you're gonna want to get a reinforced version of this non-Hemi rocker arm. The Hemi one, I've had pretty good success with just leaving stock. Now, if you're going for super high performance applications, you're gonna to wanna to get a roller rocker style. So if you remove the governor on these engines, you're gonna to need to put in a billet flywheel and some stiffer valve springs. That's where these heads have a big difference between them. All right, so the big difference between these two sets of valves, this is the Hemi valve retainer and it's what's called a split keeper. It's literally a split piece of metal. These pop off just like this. And they're easy to get off when there's no pressure on the valve spring. As you can see on this Hemi style split keeper, once you get some pressure on these guys here like this, um, they're really tough to get out. You're gonna have to compress the spring and typically use a magnet or a screwdriver. Let's get a better shot here. I've never had these come out accidentally and that's what is gonna define the difference between these two. On this non-hemi head, which is just like a GX390, it has a different type of spring retainer. So this type of spring retainer is just simply a clip and the challenge with these is that they can fall off during high RPM, high horsepower applications. And all you have to do on these is push them down, slide them over, and they slip right out. So I thought, not a big deal. I will just put the split style keepers from this engine onto this engine here. 
Unfortunately, it's not quite that easy. I did talk to all the reputable companies that sell parts for these engines. And if you take a closer look here, this is the Hemi. This has a different style indent than this non-Hemi. If you get a close look here, you cannot just simply put split keepers on these, unfortunately. So they do sell upgrade kits for these. It's a full valve package. Comes with this stainless valve with a split style keeper to retain your springs. So the unfortunate part for this head is that whole upgrade kit costs about $262. Say you upgrade this GX390 or non-Hemi Predator 420 head. What is the issue if one of those spring retainer clips pops out? So essentially that's what's holding your valve in place. And if that clip releases, your valve is going to come out and it's going to bounce around against the piston. This could snap off and you could be looking at some significant damage. Essentially you could totally wreck your head, both valves, your spark plug, your piston, potentially your cylinder walls and anything in your drivetrain. Something these two head styles share that needs to be upgraded if you're going to higher horsepower applications is an upgraded push rod. Historically, the part number for these Hemis is 60349. Now, I've heard reports, I don't know if they're true, that the numbers don't always match whether it's a Hemi or non-Hemi. You can simply look inside the box, there's a little flap, and if you see the rectangle head, you know it's a Hemi. If you see the hexagonal, then you know it's a non-Hemi. The Hemi heads have rectangular valve covers. They look like this at the store, or if you're checking out inside a box. Now the non-Hemi heads have a hexagonal valve cover. It looks like this if you're at the store or checking one out on Marketplace. All right guys, thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll be installing this engine into the boat and giving some details on how I did that setup. Stay tuned for a water test following that video. I'll be throwing this in and seeing how it does.